Okay, well, again, welcome everybody to this now encore series session, Hack Your Job in 10 Days. This session is brought to you by People and Organization Development, part of People and Culture here at Berkeley. And my name is Lisa Reichert. I am the Career and Professional Development Lead on the People and Organization Development team. And we're thrilled to introduce this new series, the Now Encore series, as an extension of the Now Conference. And Dave Schonenberg, our presenter for today, actually presented at the Now Conference. And uh, he is truly giving an encore presentation by being part of our Now Encore series. Um, we were not some technical difficulties to record that presentation during the NOW conference. So we are recording it here today. So um, I am thrilled to have Dave here sharing how to hack your job in 10 days and making the most out of your development at Berkeley. Dave is an administrator at RISE Lab where he supports the research and development of cutting edge applications that make decisions in real time at the interface of technology and the physical world. Prior to joining UC Berkeley, he spent a decade as the general manager of Rivendell Bicycle Works. And Dave is also an accomplished writer and a cruciverbalist. How many people know what cruciverbalist means? I had to look it up. And I learned that it means that Dave is an aficionado of solving crossword puzzles and he also creates them. Uh, who's also a musician. So Dave has learned a lot of things about hacking and developing oneself here at Berkeley and he's here to share that. So um, just as a reminder before Dave gets started, um, I have everybody on mute and if you have questions or comments, please put them in the chat. Dave is going to um, share all of the information with you um, and then we actually have time scheduled for the end. We have 15 minutes slotted for the end for Q&A. So please hold your questions to the end. Feel free to jot them down and we'll be reviewing them and then we'll have time for Q&A at the end. All right, well, Dave, thank you so much for being here and I will let you take it from here. Thanks, Lisa. Um, yeah, nerd alert. I used to make crossword puzzles and try to sell them to magazines. Um, thanks everyone for coming. Um, I'm really glad you're here. And I think this time, since the crowd is smaller that we'll have more more time to answer questions at the end. So I'll get right to it. Hack your job in 10 days, make the most of your development time at Berkeley. Um, what will we talk about today? Hold on, my Zoom window is in front of my slide. Um, hack your job in 10 days. How to maximize your paid development leave. Um, you have 10 days of it, so we're gonna figure out how to maximize it by building a plan to use all 10 days of it. Um, by doing these little baby steps towards your professional development, you will inadvertently trick your brain into being happier at work by activating something called the progress principle, which we'll get into. And then there's some more practical hacks like deciphering job codes, um, getting into the job matrix and prototyping your next job or dream job. Um, I have one I call access to influence uh, for infiltrating some VIP gatherings at Berkeley. Um, crowdsource your resume, peek into the salary day databases and access what I call the super hack, which is the reverse tuition loophole where you get paid to uh, take classes at Berkeley. Well, um, sorry, I skipped forward there. Um, so the one, the one basic thing here, and if you decide to leave this meeting with one thing, it is to exploit the 10 days of career development loophole that I call it. Um, you can go to HR policies, the link is right there um, at the top. Uh, procedure 50, professional development. The first part, A, general, there's no limit on the amount of training that the department head can give you. I mean, that should be obvious to everyone. Your boss's boss can make you take training. But the second part, um, the professional development leave. Um, career employees are eligible for 80 hours, or call it 10 days, if you will, of release time per calendar year for professional development, which should be career ladder related. Let's say that's with regards to your job at Berkeley. Um, the second part, requests for exceptions shall be directed in writing. This is something that Lisa confirmed for me before I presented this, was that 
you can have more than 80 hours. Um, and then the last part is that unused time may not be accumulated or carried over. So it's in fact, use it as, or lose it. Um, going back to the first part, it is development leave. It's a kind of leave that as a Berkeley employee, you are entitled to like vacation leave, sick leave, um, paternity leave, um, dependent care leave, all sorts of leaves that are available to us. But I did a little poll at the last one and 73% of the attendees of that larger group were not aware that they had professional development leave coming to them. And because it is completely self-directed by you and working with your supervisor, um, a lot of people don't use it. So we're gonna make sure that we use it all. And so if you have pencil, paper, however you keep notes, this is the time to just write a list, one through 10. Um, and as we go here through this presentation, you'll probably get a few, um, ideas of what to fill it in with. Um, lots of seed things, classes, certifications, committees, communities of practice, counseling, are all things that you can use your professional development time for. Um, so with my hacks, I broke it down into two types. Essentially institutional hacks, which is the more concrete, physical, perky type of things that you have at Berkeley. And then the other is well, like life hacks psychological hacks. So institutional hacks you have, um, this is what I call maximizing your time at Berkeley. In the last nine months, um, it's more clear than ever to me that uh, time is limited, things can happen. So if you take a step back and take a big view, um, are you making the most of your time at Berkeley? Um, I think first and foremost is the people. If you spend your career not connecting with people, um, <clears throat> people are the biggest resource that Berkeley has. Um, so when you leave Berkeley, will you have made connections with people and maximized the network that you have? Um, other things that I think everyone should be using to the fullest is the campus itself. Unfortunately, we can't really do that right now, but the libraries, museums, events, um, a lot of this was more applicable before COVID. Oops, excuse me. Um, hold on, I lost my screen. Are you with me? Dave, yes. Um, I would okay. add, even though we can't, most of us can't physically access campus, there are some really cool virtual tours of campus. So it's a good time to explore campus virtually and get to know it and learn about departments and units. Totally. I was excited that the library is finally now open. Um, check out about 50 books a year so. Um, Another, another part of this was, was just perks, free sports tickets, discounts. I know we have these student store discounts and everything. And if you're not, you know, if you never go to a football game, have you maximized your time at Berkeley, right? I'm not even that into football. We have other really unique benefits like the 457B, pension plan, paid vacations, holidays, family leave. And then there's this professional development leave, plus all the resources available to use it. And it is use it or lose it. So this is the one where if you imagine leaving vacation time on the table, it, that doesn't make sense to anyone. I think everyone should think about their professional development leave that way. Um, whatever you're looking for at Berkeley, whether that's making more money, um, having your job be something that you're more interested in or having greater impact with your effort, all of those things, um, your path there is through the professional development. And so the other side of this is the psychological hacks. There are gazillions of these um, life hacks that have been boiled down into listicles and TED Talks, um, all about work-life balance, lowering stress at work, um, personal growth, not necessarily career ladder related, right? Continual progress. Um, and it's a hobby of mine to read all of these uh, management psychologies, pop psychology, uh, self-help books, and they all share certain things. Um, you have to adopt a gro growth mindset, and then you have to take your big nebulous goals and turn them into an actual system for getting there so that you can take little baby gradual steps and let it snowball. And as you reflect and improve upon it and repeat, um, you will start uh, doing something as my mentor calls it, um, 
engineering serendipity. Serendipitous things will happen when you start taking these steps. And Excuse me, Dave. Dave, yeah. were you um, intending to share your screen right now? Because we don't see it. Okay, sorry, I thought we okay, were. That's okay. okay. I'm, I'm clicking present and I, I'm sorry, I don't know what you guys were looking at. Maybe if you click on share screen. Got it. Sorry for that, everyone. I lost my screen. Sometimes you might find it, yeah, down the month. There we go. Okay. So we what I just said in that slide was all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Are we caught up? Yeah, we can Lisa? see it. Yes. Okay. I know we have a lot of great project managers in this audience, so I encourage everyone to start thinking about their career as a project. Um, one, this book I read when I was a supervisor. I don't have a supervisor anyone anymore. So I, I really just took all the lessons from it to, to apply to myself, to make my, my daily uh, job better. And I, and I wanna share that with everyone because um, in this book, Progress Principle, talked about using small wins to ignite joy, engagement, and creativity at work. Really, it's, it's a way to motivate your employees. Um, if you want to not read the book and just read an article, there's a link at the bottom there. It was adapted into a Harvard Business Review article. But to boil it down, what the book said was that, and, and they did all these tests, decades of research, thousands of people and companies that they studied, um, negative influ influencers and motivators, positive motivators, everything um, from you know happy hours on the positive side, ping pong tables at work, those totally leisurely work environments uh, on the other side to, you know, more uh, sales goals types of motivating things. And of all the positive events that inter influence inner work life, the single most powerful is progress and meaningful work. So it wasn't the happy hours, the birthday parties, the um, free food. It was none of that. It was just simply that the, the employee themselves is making progress in work that is meaningful to them. And when they polled the managers in these groups, 95% of them interesting, interestingly, they got it wrong. They thought that um, they thought it was the birthday parties, the pats on the backs, the uh, quarterly whatevers. Um, and so the most effective way to increase satisfaction, purpose, and happiness in your daily work life is to regularly schedule small wins. And this is sort of breaking it down, how it's gonna make you uh, happier and more satisfied as, at work is to set yourself up for these little small wins. So if you set yourself up for these in your career development, you'll boost the quality of your work life. If your job itself doesn't provide you these little wins or these great projects, the meaningful work can be your professional development. And I hope I'm still sharing my screen. Um, so as we, as we go through here, um, just you are. Go, go back to this, uh, go back to your little 10, list of 10 and fill it in. What is that baby step that's gonna start you going? Um, what committee have you always been talking about doing? What LinkedIn learning classes? I started to do these all the time. I think they're pretty great. Um, do that thing your boss has put on your achieve together. Um, go to now. Originally, when I put this talk together, it was not about hacking your job at all. It was sharing all of the tricks and hacks I had for looking for a job at Berkeley as an external applicant. Because when I wanted to come back and look for jobs at Berkeley, there were thousands. Um, right now, there are maybe a little more than 100 last time I checked. Um, and so some of these tips and tricks are were designed to kind of filter all the noise in those job descriptions so you can get to what it's actually paying, what they're actually looking for. Um, but when you start doing these actions, um, you'll see that they actually start improving the job that you have. Um, so deciphering job codes. What can you tell about a job codes, a job based on the code alone? Um, you can tell essentially what the job is. What does that person do on a general level? You know, they you know that they're a manager, you're not sure which department, right? But you, you essentially know the scope of their job. Uh, and then you also know the job, how much it pays, the minimum and maximum somewhere on the scale, right? Um, but when I was looking through job codes and trying to find my job at Berkeley, I noticed all these weird little 
phenomenons. First of all, when I did this actual search, when I was putting this together, this is from October of uh, 2019. Um, you'll see some of these some of these jobs I have listed here. On, on the left, you have the job title. In the middle, you have the classification title. That's the official name. And the, the classification title matches up with the job code. And for a job code, you have a salary range. But when I was looking for jobs, certain managers and supervisors choose not to list that. Certain put commensurate. Certain put other ranges on there. But I had, I had figured out how to sort of de decipher that. So you'll see on the right side there, commensurate. That was my first little hack was figuring out how to, how much of these jobs actually pay. But then you'll see on the left, you have the same classification for these, but you have wildly different job titles and different roles and responsibilities within that job. An executive assistant, I'm thinking working for a dean or a chancellor, um, lots of meetings, probably lots of travel pre-COVID. It's a lot different than a operations manager, who I'm assuming is your in the office, nose to the grindstone sort of person. The last two, program coordinator and department manager, I, I see a program coordinator having a small project, whereas a department manager has a lots of programs. So, and yet these are all still classified as the same thing. So if you are looking around at what else is out there for you, look at for other jobs with your exact same classification. Another thing to notice is that job titles span classifications. These three department manager jobs clearly have different, um, clearly they're a different size department, clearly they're different responsibilities. Um, but as you can see, the salary is almost double in the administrative manager role. Um, so this is something to, to look at. If department manager in a big department is something you've always are looking at doing, but perhaps Perhaps some, there's something more attainable in your own job family for a lateral move. Um, I have here a list of job codes. I'll, I'll go through that on the next slide. I'll also show you how to look up salary ranges by job code. Um, and if you want to, if you don't know what your job code is, you can look at your paycheck or go onto UC Path uh, and find it on your personal information. So at this link, you'll see at the top, there is a list of all of the job codes at UC Berkeley. This is sort of an odd website. I've, it's not the official one, but it is available to everyone. They don't have to authenticate with a CalNet. So I, that's why I put this link in here. Um, and you'll see those job codes go all the way from chancellor to every single job at Berkeley. Um, you know, I just, here's a screenshot from the middle. You have glass blowers, technicians, telescope technicians, aerospace technicians, automotive technicians. There's so many jobs at Berkeley. I, I really enjoyed just looking and seeing everything that's out there. Campanile operator was one of them. You know, whenever that job comes up, I'm going to find up, out about it. Um, one of the biggest, it, the most influential sort of professional development books and movements out there is the Design Your Life series of books. Um, and a lot of the now presenters at the previous one had. Um, have taken these seminars and are certified to put on these seminars. But one of the easiest exercises they have in design your life was take your job description, cross out all the parts that you don't want, circle the parts you do want and double down on those and present that as, you know, how might this work? Um, and interestingly enough, Berkeley just relaunched their system-wide job builder to essentially allow you to do just that. Uh, I put these kids in there designing their own job. Someone's, I'm hearing someone's notifications go off in the background there. Um, the job builder, you can see, I put the link at the top there. Um, you basically you go and search the job standards. Everyone knows how to sort and filter a list. But once you pull up a list, um, I, this one's just general administration. Um, you can see on the, on the right there, you have three actions for each job code. Um, and if you, as you're going around and doing this stuff, you should write down these job codes that are interesting to you because they'll come in later and you can put alerts and stuff up for them. So you can view the job standard for that job. You can create a position, which I'm calling the design your own job part, and you can download something called the job matrix. So in, if you follow that link and click through, um, you'll see I just filled in one for an ethics and compliance 
uh, Profiler 5. I, I'm not really even sure what that job is, but I pulled it up just as a random one. And so you can go in and you can see essentially what these scope level responsibilities are. These are the things that you can't change about the job, right? But then you can also um, go ahead and see what the duties of the position are and sort of rebalance to something that's a little bit more of the portfolio that you think your job, supercharged job would be. You know, crossing out the parts you don't like, doubling down on the parts you do, getting really good at those parts. Um, and what's interesting is, is I always thought that, you know, by crossing out the parts I don't like, that would leave unwanted work on other people in the group, but it's, you'll, you'll find it's amazing. There are people that want to focus on that stuff. So how, how might we make this work is what you should be thinking of presenting to your team. Um, uh oh, the matrix, the job matrix report. If you click on any of those um, job codes, you can pull up the job matrix report. And this is really interesting. I pulled this one up for admin officer two. Um, and it shows what the next two obvious steps are, admin officer three, admin officer four. And you can see as you go from column to column, what is the increase in duties and responsibilities and scope and everything. So you can actually, you can identify the things that you either are already doing to make your case, or you can start honing your development plan to address those specific things. Like just in this one, a generic scope of an, Officer two, a professional who applies job skills. You, know, you basically do things in a responsible way, right? The next one is experienced professional who knows how to apply theory and put it into practice. Okay, it's you know more of a theoretical professional, whereas the number four is a technical leader, high degree of knowledge, overall field, and recognized. So they have they're recognized in the field. And as you start to pick things up, how how would I get recognized? Who who is what bodies recognize these sorts of administrative leaders? Oh, maybe I have to join the staff assembly. You'll see uh, for this one, for example, um, there were no key responsibilities listed for 10, 11, or 12 for a two, but uh, the experienced professional, obviously, these are obvious easy things that you can add to your development plan. Assist in the design and drafting of website content. Oh, I do that, but I need more practice in that. Whatever the case is, um, access safety coordinator. I happen to know this, you know, something a lot of people can volunteer and um, stretch to do. Moving on to the next, and I'll, I'll, we'll have a lot of time for questions at the end. Um, moving on to espionage. Um, you can look up salaries by job title. You can look them up by job grade. Um, and you can also look them up by person. This is sort of a little known secret. Here's how you look it up by job grade. So if you go to the title code lookup system, the link for this one is at the bottom. And again, I have all of these links in a resources doc, which um, we'll, we'll paste in the notes. Uh, at the end, I suppose. But here um, you can see I just pulled up um, the title code system. Um, you can search on the left there by grades, titles, um, academic titles, obviously, obviously for faculty. Um, and then down you see all the different grades and the salaries listed for those grades. You can, you can drill down and click into them. Um, for example, here's grade 19. Um, and this lists on the less on the left all the job code they call it title here job codes and then the title name so you can see I was sticking with the admin officer two thing here's admin officer two but also project policy analyst two museum education supervisor one um, admissions student disability specialist two student services advisor three you can see there's a huge variety of things in your range things that you could transition to as a lateral move to, you know, if you're not necessarily looking for the finance for a, for a raise, you can be looking for something that's more aligned with your interests. And here's the privacy update. You can look up everybody's salary, mine included, everyone in this room at this link. Um, and everyone can look up yours uh, going back to 2018. I don't think they have updated it yet. My slides in any case aren't 
updated, but you just go, the link is here um, and you can search. You can search by year, you can search by location across the UC system. You can search people's name. You can search by title to see what everyone with your job title is making. You can search who's in a certain range. If you're looking, you know, if you're like, I need to make X amount of money. I don't care what the job is, show me everything. You can do that. Um, you can see here that I sorted it by gross pay to see who makes the most money. And believe it or not, coaches, top the list. Oh, I keep, uh, are you looking, is, Lisa, are you looking at my presentation again? Yes, we are again. We're looking Sorry. at salary ranges by coaches. Okay. Not head yeah. coach. Sorry, I clicked something and okay. it, it jumped out for a second okay. there. Um, okay. Welcome to your new obsession. Here's another interesting tool, Spambots. You, you can use the recruiting center, which is a whole, which is the jobs board, to set up email, email notifications every time a job code or a keyword or any other of your search criteria comes up. So this can save you a lot of time. Um, I do not regularly look at job boards. So I set these up to anytime something that I'm really interested in seeing comes up, I get a timely reminder that that's come up. And it also, when you do see these and you occasionally click through, you'll see new skills coming up. Um, you see, what is this certification that everyone's asking for? Um, and also, it's kind of a refresher on the language of job searching too. Um, so quickly, how you would do that, uh, you go to UC Path, you click Recruiting Work Center, that opens up a new tab. You click Careers, that opens up a new tab. Um, then everyone will know how to get through here, but um, I just did a, a quick search for Camp Counselor. Uh, you go ahead and click More Options to save, um, to drill down and uh, search more deeply by field. You can search by job code. You can search by keywords. Um, you'll see this one. I just I just punched in the job code for Recreational Program Leader Three. So that's the camp counseling one. And then you just go ahead and you click save search. And that pops up yet another window and you give it a search name, you click notify me whenever um, jobs in my criteria. I have created a search for the keyword guitar. I love guitars. Um, no jobs at Berkeley have come up yet, but as soon as one does, I'm gonna find out about it. So once you've gone through and you've assembled, you've written down all these um, job codes, you've looked up everyone in your department salaries, you're um, like, I want to do this, I want to do that here, all these different ideas have come up. So you have these sort of big picture moment, what's next, get a new job, try to get, try to go up, get a similar job in a different department, like I suggested before, look at, you know, look at all the jobs that you're completely qualified that for that are out there. Um, work on raises, that's just reinforcing the job that you have. Um, hack the job you have. That's working with your supervisor to, like I said before, cross out the parts you don't like, double down on the things you do. Perhaps that effort will create a new job title for you. Um, you could quit. You could leave Berkeley. It's hopeless. Um, I think the most common thing to do at this stage is I don't know. And you go into an exploratory phase. Um, or you could do nothing, which is the thing I would recommend the least because if we go back to that progress principle, if you do nothing, you're just going to go to work and have no meaningful progress, no meaningful work that you're making progress in. Um, so what's your next move? Um, I think the easiest thing is what's missing from your resume that should be obvious to you for the jobs that you want. Um, you know, there's technical skills, there's essential skills, what we used to call soft skills. Um, there's transferable skills. I put a, a little graphic from the transferable skills library there. Um, that's again, that's in my resource doc. Um, and then there's some bigger things, which is projects and stretch assignments. And if you're, you know, if your job doesn't have projects available to you, you're going to have to find them. And then anytime stretch assignments do come up that are outside of your comfort zone, you've got to take them and figure out what resources you can use to educate yourself to do them. Um, so there is a link right there, that bit.ly link to Dave's hacks. Um, it's a Google doc. Um, I think everyone can comment on it. So if you have things to add, I, I really encourage you to do that. Um, I broke them down into a couple different areas. Um, exploration, 
as I said before, you don't know what you want to do, I would, I would recommend checking out the career development workshops, um, checking out that job builder where you can, you can see possibilities um, for prototyping a future job. Uh, you can do the research, you can use those uh, resources I showed you before to look up salaries and everything. Um, if you're looking for more impact, uh, I put a link there to 80,000 hours, that's in the resource doc too. Um, feeling good, personal growth. I put this one in here because a lot of people aren't necessarily looking to jump and climb the ladder, but going back to the very beginning and making the most, maximizing the time you have, um, you can, you should use this professional development time to do things for your own personal growth, like assessments, um, which you can do through uh, HR or you can do through the LinkedIn learning. Um, do things like now, go through the now archive. Um, check out some of those design thinking ones there. Um, you can also do career counseling and you can also volunteer. Volunteering is where you're gonna be able to get those projects and stretch assignments because they're always looking for people. Um, again, if, if you're at a point in your career where you're not necessarily looking to climb the ladder, um, let's say you're two years from retiring uh, and you don't wanna make any big moves, um, perhaps networking, joining staff organizations, dedicating your professional development time to joining a community of practice, joining the mentoring program. Um, tons of options for you to use your professional development time. And then, then there's the hard certifications, like going to extension and getting a certification in web design project management. Um, and then there's the easy one, which is e-learning. Uh, you have the UC Learning Center, and then you also have LinkedIn Learning and I start since doing this presentation the first time, I started a little routine of picking like a project management one and running a five minute lesson before I start my day. Um, access to influence. This is another thing from design thinking. If you don't have authority, if you don't have a title, if you don't get to make decisions, then the only way for you to get any power, the way to hack power is to get a direct line to influence. And so you can do that. And Berkeley has set you up for that. Um, it's something I found out about at the last NOW conference, and it really, it's really been great to me. Um, you can join the mentorship program. Um, you get to connect with a diverse group of, on one side, seasoned campus leaders, certain job titles uh, permit you to be a mentor. And then you have the network of your peers, usually early career, relatively new people at Berkeley. I think it's open to anyone up to five years, but I'm sure they'll make an exception um, for anyone. There's also an element to it where there's a mixer at the beginning and you're trying to pair up with your ideal mentor, but you get to meet a lot of them and you get to exchange resumes, you get to exchange cards and you get to do informational interviews. Um, Pre-COVID, that, that meant going to somewhere around campus, sitting on a park bench, having a chat. Um, they go over your resume, you go over theirs and you get these like micro mentorships, which I found to be very valuable because they gave me a broad scope of different leadership opportunities on campus. It also gives you a really interesting um, opportunity to crowdsource your resume. I hinted at this in the uh, introduction. Uh, I went to the last NOW conference in 2019 and um, I'd come from a position where I used to filter a lot of resumes and I had zero tolerance for a resume that was longer than one page, had any unnecessary language or anything. And I had this really Spartan resume. I brought it into uh, the now recruiting coaches corner. And uh, they told me my resume sucked. It looked like this. It looked like I just graduated from college. There wasn't enough on there. And that if you look at academic resumes, you know, they're kind of reflecting the CV thing. They're dense. Um, and so I took all that and I redid it. And then I, I brought that to a dozen potential mentors and they gave me the best uh, feedback on, you know, this is, leave this out, include this, tell your story. How do you build up your arc? Um, and I could talk for days about the mentorship program, but if you are interested in mentoring, my supervisor gave me a great tip. Um, if you have a mentor in mind, you can nominate them to be in the program so that they that you can do it together. Um, as I rush through this so that we have more time for questions, um, the su I call it the super hack, the reverse tuition. So. One well, of the biggest burdens in anyone's life is paying for education, right? But under the sponsored tuition program, UC Berkeley staff are eligible for having UC extension classes tuition 
be paid for. Um, if you use your development time for this, you in fact are getting paid to do it. You're getting, you paid your salary plus your benefits to do these professional development activities and get your next certification. You need your supervisor to buy in on this. So it has to, you have to be working with your supervisor for this. Um, there's tons of details and restrictions and everything. So I encourage you to click through the, the links. So now you have tons of, tons of information. You have this big, you know, satellite view of, I'm imagining, I know that's not Berkeley down there, but this big hub of energy and ideas and students and great staff and where do you fit in it all? It's time to zoom in to just the next year because you only have 10 days per calendar year to use this stuff on. Take out your 10 list of 10 and start filling it in. Um, I'm gonna kind of rush through these sample plans that I made because I know through running through this presentation that they, I, I can just go off forever. Um, but I'll just go through the first one real quick. This is for someone who just doesn't have any idea. Um, someone suggested I put commitment of phobic in there. Um, this is, I'm, I broke it down into roughly eight hour chunk, 10 eight hour chunks, right? Meet with a career coach and do the follow-ups, um, do all the UC learning career assessments, go to now, if you do all of the presentations, just take about a day, attend three two hour career development workshops, join the new professional networks and go to the meetings, join a community of practice that you're interested, go to the meetings. Um, I put join the mentorship program on here and then dedicated the next three because in my case, that took meetings with my mentor, basically it gobbled up all of uh, my time, but together we worked on this presentation. Um, and then I would, I would suggest doing a bunch of those little uh, 30 minute to one hour LinkedIn learning courses. Um, these are, are great because once you finish the courses, it puts a little metal on your, your uh, LinkedIn profile, which is a side benefit. I, I'm not sure who's looking at those, but Again, this is something my mentor, Jill, told me, engineer serendipity. You start going to these classes, you start attending uh, workshops, you start going to meetings, things are gonna start happening. Here's one for a new administrator. I was thinking you should get the event planner cert and a couple other things. Um, all managers now are required to take this um, series of courses, uh, Berkeley People Management courses. So if you are an aspiring manager, you can do this one. If you're aspiring to get into research administration, there's, a, there's one, there's a financial analyst one. Here's your super heavy lift, um, getting the project management professional certification from uh, extension. I think you, by my calculation, if you took all the classes and you only did it within 10 days per calendar year of development time, you would, you'd finish it in two and a half years. But, you know, if, if you're like me, you got a kid at home, nights and weekends are just not going to happen. This is probably for me, the only way that that, that would happen. So I'll put that up for everyone. And now, now I'm going to wrap it up by tying it, tying it in with achieve together, call it hack together. Um, also, what's in it for supervisors? Previous life, my, the last thing my boss wanted was for me to learn new skills so that I could leave my current position and get a different job. Um, that's because the company only had so much upward potential, right? And you wanted to keep the small team together. Berkeley is a completely different environment. And so for me, it's still quite novel that UC Berkeley's performance evaluation program is focused on professional development. It says it right there. This is a screenshot from the website. If you look at, and so we're gonna use this 10 day plan to completely uh, blow away your achieved together reviews. Um, this, is, this is what still amazes me. In your job evaluation, there's only one one of these bullet points, key responsibilities, is your actual job. But all the rest of it is you doing actions towards your professional development. So what types of goals are included in your, your achieve together? New skills, knowledge, and experience in support of individual growth. You are going, just by making a 10-day plan and using one day, you're going to have done that. Then two to four goals, including more of the Key job responsibilities, just do a good job. Everyone can do that, right? Special projects and initiatives. This is where you're going to have to 
jump outside of your comfort zone, volunteer for things, or create them via the new skills that you are learning on your own. Stretch assignments, this is an opportunity if you don't know how to do something, volunteer for it, take a class, learn it. Um, and then the last one is UCB contributions such as committee, service, mentoring, community of practice. We covered that. You can put that stuff in your professional development plan. And here's the, the check-in questions. You know, I just went ahead and just put a check mark by all of them because you are essentially going to do this all with your professional development plan from your perspective. But there's a big um, inclusion element to achieve together. And the way that you can do that by collaborating and including people is sharing this plan with your college. Should tell you know your immediate peers, this is what I'm doing. Invite them to the classes you're taking. Um, if you, in fact, learn something that's going to be very valuable to your team, share it with the team and bring people along. Um, and in doing so, you will show leadership. That's, going, that's all going into uh, stretching your position. So this plan has you covered. And so going back to the very beginning, make a 10-day plan to maximize development and leave. That's all you have to just use the time is all I'm um, all I'm really saying here. Um, if you do that, you're inadvertently going to be a little bit happier with day-to-day. -day. It's not going to, you know, if your job itself does not provide the meaningful work that's needed to activate the progress principle, make the goal you, the happier, calmer, better compensated version of you. Um, share it with your peers, bring them along. Um, and then sync it up with your achieve together. This all you have to work with your supervisor for this, but you're basically going to manage up and make it really easy for them to give you good marks. Um, review it each year, build momentum, and do it again. And so that, I think I'm right on time. Go build your plan. Um, Ten days a year. I'm rethinking this for my next presentation. I'm open now to to dividing it into eighty tiny micro chunks because I've been starting to start my day with a little lesson. But um, before I go, I do want to give thanks to my mentor, Jill, and my supervisor, Kat, both for motivating me to do this and supporting it. Um, so that's it. Now I'll open to questions. Well, thanks, Dave. That was excellent. So many amazing resources. And you know, I want to acknowledge everybody who's here. They're already hacking their job because they're here taking a career development workshop and learning about resources and that is part of the plan so good good job all of you and what questions do you have for dave feel free to put them in the chat i'm also very fortunate to have lisa here as the professional development expert to answer anything i, I don't know and my supervisor is also here she might chime in i'm happy to to add to all the great information and strategies you have shared, Dave. So um, feel free to chat, or if you would like to unmute yourself, if it's easier to ask a question or share a comment, or even, even share a strategy or resource you have applied to hack your job. I'm also putting my email address in the uh, chat if anyone wants to follow up with me afterwards. I encourage you to do so. Met a lot of nice people after the last one. I and I think we also started a couple fires in little departments, but uh, I like that. I had a question. I, I chatted it to you, Dave, but it might be hard to see as a present in your presenter mode. Um, do you happen to know how much um, our supervisors can see our job searching activity through UC Path? Is it only when they've when we've applied for a new position, or can they see other activity? I don't know. I do not know the answer to that. Perhaps I can tell you. Can you can, they can't. I'm a supervisor. I, I'm not. I'm not privy to that kind of information unless somebody tells me. <clears throat> so you know, that's where the whole thing of like working with, letting your supervisor know. I think that you get like where at other places. You know, I know for myself, like at other places I've worked that were in Berkeley. No, you didn't really necessarily want to share with your supervisor that you're looking for a place outside the organization. Um, but at Berkeley, it's really different. Like, you know, really good part of my job as a supervisor is like, you know, of course, I like, I like that people that are really good stay with my team. 
But my other responsibility is making sure that people, they're really great stay at Berkeley, you know? So this whole like job development and, and them being happy with what it is that they do and finding new opportunities, that's part of like my job as a supervisor. So, you know, I, I can't tell like if people, I, I have no idea if people are looking for something. But um, I, I do encourage people to, you know, just be transparent with your supervisor, you know, depending on the relationship and stuff. Um, if you are looking for something, because you might, do, first off, you can use your development time for interviews. I don't know if people know that. Um, and, and also, maybe, maybe they have some good input for you, too. So. I'm, I'm glad to hear that also, because I think that would be a huge invasion of privacy if it Absolutely. was the case. Absolutely. Like, I don't want, I wouldn't want my supervisor doing that. <laughs> Absolutely. Also, um, one thing that, you know, I, I, I feel like looking around isn't, people need to get out of your mind that, that looking around is, is like, you're in a point of desperation and want to leave, right? Looking around, I'm trying to say is, is, is going to help you be aware of new skills. It's going to be aware. Um, I mean, part of this, I mean, there's, there's an element of, okay, you can look around and see where everyone stands on campus, right? That's, that's, you know, not only to see what's possible for you, but also the transparency provides a certain amount of uh, equity. So if you're, you know, if, if you think that you're entitled for something and you're not, you know, things aren't fair, I think it's really, I think it's really important to be aware of what what other groups are doing, what other responsibilities, what other, how other people's jobs are classified at what levels. Um, as I showed before, you know, three different department managers, three different classifications, maybe that one on the lowest end is, you know, should look, use that information as, you know, maybe I need, maybe I need to be pushing for reclassification. So I think that this, that, you know, ongoing awareness of what's out there doesn't have to suggest that you are, in fact, you have your eye on the door. And as, um, as I indicated earlier, you know, I, I built this as, you know, my mentor, Jill had said, oh, you have all these neat hacks for like when you were buying the job, I was like, oh yeah, I know how to look up how much it pays if it's not listed. And she said, oh, you should put that together in a presentation. And then by the time now came around, there was only a hundred jobs on <laughs> and, at Berkeley. And so it was really more about, you know, I think more people are in that hunker down and make your job better. Uh, work with your supervisor to really focus on the stuff that you want to work on towards you know building out the job you have and if there's after a couple of years of professional development there's really no room you know you're going to be set for that next step and have your supervisor support i would think um great Dave, we questions? had another question um reina reina i hope i'm saying your name correctly asked is there a 10-day plan for new managers i think you had a, a plan for manage you know aspiring did managers. have um let me grab the uh, let me grab the link to my presentation. And if anybody is wanting to create a custom plan, please feel free to reach out and schedule a career coaching session. Um, you can meet. I'm one of the career coaches. Linda Lundberg is the other, and we're happy to be your thought partner and think through what your professional development plan would look like based on your goals. So Dave has a link to the, the coaching uh, appointment calendar in his presentation. And I just posted in the um, chat the link to my slides, which has that um, manager plan. And then also um, I have a Google Doc where I linked everything. I'll, I'll find the link for that too. Paste that in there. And also just a comment that came in from Michael, who said, I appreciate the suggestions to keep moving forward on hacking our jobs. We know we have the resources and time here at UC, but we often take it for granted getting so wrapped and just keeping up with work tasks. But this is important. Thanks for the green light. Well, thank you. I have had, to, I've definitely had to uh, practice what I preach a little bit since this, this first one, because um, I got a lot of follow-ups last time, people saying like, let's connect on LinkedIn. And then, you know, I've never chatted on LinkedIn before. Now I know how to do that because <laughs> people are asking me, you know, uh, 
what's, what are, what's your 10 day plan? And, you know, I'm saying, well, okay, I'm, I've actually started uh, my big project just work is Salesforce administration. So it's, it's really um, quite clear what I need to do is take these certifications. Right. But also um, I found, you know, I'm trying to roll it out in my group and um, change management came up as an idea. So I started, I started running a, uh, LinkedIn learning course on change management. They have, they have the chapters broken into like six minute chunks. So you just start one of those in the morning and uh, it really sets you on that path. Um, I also, in uh, the designing your life book, they had a little exercise, which was every day, you know, for a week or a month or however long you want, write down, what did I learn today? What did I initiate and who did I help? And, you know, if you go through a couple days without learning anything, initiating anything or helping anyone, you know, two days in a row and you're like, oh, I got to do something. And so you start habitually building towards the career development. And um, it, it sort of overlapped with me putting this together and learning about project management that just you start to project manage your career, you know, put it, put a five-year timeline where you want to go, what you want to accomplish, um, what your next action is, check in each week. What do I need to do? I think breaking it down in 10 chunks is really the best way to do it though. Um, and just starting a regular practice. And I'm, I'm really uh, fortunate that I don't need to uh, schedule down to the minute and use the development time um, code on Cal time, but it's there if you know you need to have that accountability with your um, with your supervisor. You can put um, I'm blocking out this time for my professional development, and I really recommend planning it with your supervisor in advance, like a day here in the future, making sure it doesn't get in the way of other stuff. Any other questions? Uh, we had a comment, um, another, Michael just wanted to thank you, Dave. I was at your presentation at the NOW conference and it got me going on doing more for myself. Just finished my first UC Extension class recently. Was more than happy to sign on here today as I got a few nuggets I had missed during our NOW conference presentation, during your NOW conference presentation. Can't wait to take my next steps. I need the reminders each week. Whatever you can do to to get on the reminders, I, I'm, I'm the same way. It's, it's really easy to let this, this professional development stuff slide and they should, they <laughs> should almost make it mandatory instead of self-directed because uh, I think a lot of people feel almost pressure to uh, not take it or, or prioritize it last when in fact um, it's, it's good for your job performance and it is really valued on your achieve together to make these steps. So um, I think it's great. I think Achieve Together is great. And I've never seen anything like that in my previous former life outside of the university. So I, I just think it's great. There's an organization with almost unlimited upward potential, you know, and uh, sort of a framework to get there, but it's really up to you. All right. Well, thank you, Dave. Thank you so much for being here again for this Encore series and for sharing all your great tips and strategies. And I so agree. It's like it's about taking those small steps that add up and make such a big difference. And you have provided us with so many great ideas. So I thank you so much for sharing your time and your experience and your encouragement. And I want to thank everybody for being here. We will send I will send the presentation. Um, slide deck and a link to an evaluation. We appreciate your feedback and we'll stay on for a couple more minutes. And, you know, if you don't have any questions, then uh, thank you and have a great afternoon. And we hope to see you at future workshops as part of hacking your job. All right. Take care, everybody. I'll stay on if anyone has more questions. Thank you for the opportunity, Lisa. My pleasure, Dave. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Dave. You did a great job. Thank you, Kat. Yeah, I'm going to take off.